An important question every potential postgraduate student will ask is, what are the entry requirements for my chosen postgraduate program? Will I have the qualifications to be offered a place in the program? Well, good news. <laughs> if these are your thoughts, come along with me as I break down the requirements to study for your MSc in the UK. Trust me, this could be you soon. You just need to put in the work and believe. Why not? You can. Yes, you can. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you've not subscribed, do that now. And if you're a new subscriber, yay! Thank you for subscribing. Also, like this video, comment, ask your questions. I'll be with you in the comment section answering all of your questions as soon as I can. Also, please do not forget to share this video with people that need it. You know, someone might really be in need of this information. So, share with people, be kind. Um, so yeah, let's get on to the business of the day. So what are the postgraduate entry requirements here in the UK? Um, I'll be listing about five of these requirements and the first one will be academic qualification. So for your academic qualification, to apply to a postgraduate program here in the UK, you need to have a first degree or a bachelor's degree of a good standard, yeah? The main thing is to know whether your degree is seen as an equivalent in standard to a British first degree. There are actually two angles to this and one of these is that whether the level of your qualification is equivalent to the British bachelor's degree or honours level or two is the level of your final achievement in that qualification. Well, knowing fully well that we have a first class, you know, we have a second class of our honours. We have a second class lower honours degree. We also have a third class and we have a past degree. Most schools here yeah, usually accept a minimum of two two. However, I have, I'm going to be highlighting four universities that take top class degrees here yeah, in the UK and HND qualification and what their requirements are. So now let's get down to business. So in case you're wondering that, what can I do? I don't have that level of qualification for a tutu, say no more. So the first university I'll be talking about is Coventry University. So what are the courses available? Um, the courses available here are top of degrees. So you have to do a top of degree and a 15 months master's. That's, that's supposed to be good news. It makes you stay in the UK longer. You can apply afterwards for visa that will make you work. You know, that's not a bad thing to, to be honest. Um, top of your degree for HND lower level credit holders. You have like 15 months program for, you know, HND credit and top class holders. Some of the courses that you could do is accounting and finance. We have computing, there is hospitality, there is nursing, healthcare professionals, um, courses, and so many more. Um, also international business management courses. Yeah, so this is one of the things that you do. So what are the requirements? First of all, you must have five years work experience and provide two work references. And then good news again, Coventry doesn't necessarily need you to have an IELTS which is an English test that I will be highlighting later in this video. So you just need to have, if you're from Nigeria right now, you need your West African, you know, WAEG and then NECO will be used with, I believe a minimum of C6. Yeah, is what is acceptable. It's Birmingham City University and Birmingham City University can only do business and management courses for masters and for 15 months. They also accept only WAEG for English proficiency. They do this ones do not take NECO. And then the third school um, university um, is going to be the University of Sunderland. Some of the courses these guys have are marketing, human resource courses, financial management, international law, um, business law, and the rest like that. And the last but not the least, the fourth university that also take HND authors or a third class degree. Um, it's Shelfield Alam University. Um, you have, it's a, for a two-year program. Yeah, strictly international business management courses. They need you to have three years work experience. Um, and that is very essential. So I've been able to highlight the academic requirements and 
I'll be going to the second requirement. Remember, these are requirements for you to study in the UK. The first one is academic requirement. The second one is professional experience. So most postgraduate degree programs do not require you to have professional experience together with your academic qualification. But for a program focused in part on practice, you know, such as medicine, education, or business, you might be expected to have between two to five years of experience in your profession before entering a master's program. But hey, do not let this stop you. Still apply regardless. I say this every time. Apply, apply, apply. And um, you never can tell. And one more tip is that please do not apply to just one school. Apply to as many schools as possible. And, you know, spread your net. Give yourself more chances. Um, I'm going to the third, you know, academic requirement professional experience the third one now is english language expertise there are about four indicators to determine your standard of english language um, are you from a country where english is their everyday language and where the education <laughs> system operates in english i'm laughing because nigeria seems to be that country however sometimes it's not recognized globally so one of the countries that I recognize globally for that is most of canada yeah or are you also, did you complete your first degree in a university which the language of teaching is English? For instance, did you complete a university degree in Australia, for instance, now? And also, you attend an interview, you could attend an interview, you know, for the program and can demonstrate that your spoken and written English is high in all standard. But honestly, honestly, the fourth one is the most popular, is the most acceptable for international applicants, and that is you have a formal qualification in English language that meets the minimum standard the university requires. And some of these are, we have the International English Language Testing System, um, popularly known as IELTS. This is quite popular. Or TOEFL, and this is because it's quite popular, and you have access to you know study materials because of this popularity. Yeah, <laughs> bias, but yeah, you get the gist. So the next one will be five for your requirement for the fourth fourth one will be a good personal statement. Hmm. A personal statement is usually part of the application process every time of most universities while applying. The statement. Um, the statement also asks you about why you're applying for the course and why you feel you're a good applicant. Guys, this is the time to sing your achievement. This is not even the time to play down yourself and say, oh, I'm just being humble and it doesn't really matter. You know, some people can be humble or necessarily nobody. <laughs> Nobody is really asking you to be humble at this point, so you just need to like sell yourself. So, but honestly, what are the points that needs to be included? You need to highlight your own um, academic achievement. You need to highlight your special academic interest, why you want to take the postgraduate program you're applying for, what you will contribute to the program, and of course, lastly, you need to explain what you think at this stage you might want to study for your dissertation. That's more like your project. So what do you want to do? Um, remember that they also check for your written English. In this process, the admission officer who is reading it, they read it. So you might want to use proofreaders like Grammarly to confirm your spelling, punctuation, and all the good stuff. Or you can also get a second reader to read it. But again, I'm gonna say it over and over again. Let nothing deter you. Do you, you can do anything that you set your mind to do. Okay, so the last but not the least, which is the fifth, is good references. Okay, so good references. On the application form, you'll be required to give the details of two or three people who can write a reference about you that supports your application. First things first is to check out this university you're applying to organize these references, okay, and follow their requirement. Secondly, to speed up this process, follow up with your referee quickly likely so that they do the needful and give you the required reference now who should you ask to be your referee um there needs to be people who can write about you as a student and about your academic achievement um if it's also been a while since you finished school that's possible you could also include include your employer um, might be fine, especially if this person is a senior professional or either this person has a higher degree or understands the books postgraduate degrees. Um, one thing you don't want to do, you don't want to make the mistake of 
using family or personal friends because um, it's, it's believed that the judgments will not be as seen as objective you understand like they're being biased based on their you know connection with you yeah so this is where we're going to draw the curtains and these are the requirements for you to get into the uk taking one step at a time i don't think anybody cannot get into anywhere as long as you've made up your mind to do what you need to do there's nothing stopping you so in my next videos i'll be addressing funding and so many other things if you've not turned on notifications <laughs> <laughs> you are darling you need to turn on your notification to know when i drop all these nice informative educative videos once again if you've not subscribed please subscribe to my youtube channel support your girl um till next time bye